Hi, I'm Ed Sperling. I'm the editor of Chief Semiconductor Engineering. I'm here with Karpek Srinivasan of Xilinx. We're going to talk today about the evolution of the network interface card. Karpek, we've seen a lot of changes in the data center, and the network interface card used to be a fairly simple thing. How is it changing? Hey, Ed. Uh, yeah, so the, the net evolution of the network interface card uh, has been remarkable over the last few years. It started off uh, with its primary responsibility being just kind of putting packets in and out of the server into the network and from the network into the storage uh, boxes on the other side. With the Moore's law slowing down, what has transpired over the last few years is that the ability for the host CPUs to packet uh, process at that rate has slowed down. And the other part of this is that the ethernet evolution has not stopped, has not slowed down. We're now looking at transitions to 100 gig and beyond speeds. So the combination of the CPU's processing capabilities and the evolution of the 100 gig and beyond speeds happening at the same time has given rise to this new breed of products called the smart NIC. So now a regular NIC card that was responsible for just input and output of traffic into the server has taken on responsibilities of a lot more packet processing in the areas of networking, security, or storage. So a couple of things have happened here, one of which is we have much more data than we did in the past because we have sensors everywhere. Uh, we have a lot of data being produced out of AI. We also have much more heterogeneous and unique architectures that are coming into the data centers, right? So you, you hit the nail on the head. It's, it's kind of what I call a digital perfect storm, wherein this, it started off with the, the digital transformation of data in by itself. And if you've heard the expression that data is the new oil, it, it actually applies uh, front and center into this problem statement that we're talking about. Much like oil is fairly useless unless the, it's harnessed and it's kind of uh, goes from its crude form into something that's usable by automobiles or by everything else that consumes oil, data has possesses the same property. In its rawest form, data doesn't have as much value as when you do some analysis on it and pass that analyzed data with some recommendation information to the consumer. And that's the comparison that people draw with, the, with data and oil. And like you were asking, there's been a deluge of data, right? It's, it's kind of a cliche now to say that uh, it's the case. That's what the data centers are facing. And now that's why AI comes in, right? So you look at AI and say, okay, I'm gonna be able to analyze that data because the value of the data is directly proportional to the level of analysis that is done on it, but the other aspect of it is how quickly can you analyze it and how quickly can you deliver valuable information to the customer? And that's where some of the latency performance or the, the throughput aspects of this data transfer comes in. So let's drill down into this. Sure. So Kartik, what are we looking at here? So the slide here shows the evolution of this network interface card. If you look at the left-hand side of this uh, screen here, it shows the tra traditional or the standard NIC, what the, the data center servers and storage appliances were using up until the 10 and 25 gig speeds, where not, not much of the packet processing was needed at the NIC level. So the primary responsibility was just what I call plumbing in the server, input and output of data uh, in, in, from the network into the box. And the middle of the slide is the offload NICs that started surfacing at the speeds of 10 and 25 gig and 40 gig because of the, the slowing down of the CPU's ability to process data at that packet rate, which gave a lot of these offload NICs the ability to say, okay, I'm gonna get this packet processing fully into this IO complex. A lot of these ASIC based offload NICs came into the market. No programmability, a limited set of packet offloads uh, whether it's the, at, the, at the TCP transport level or some of the RDMA level or maybe some level of storage offloads, but it did, it did provide the, uh, the CPU some relief. But as we moved on to 100 gig, and as we continue to move to speeds beyond 100 gig of, on the Ethernet evolution curve, programmable smart NICs are going to be the way of the future. It gives a broad set of offloads and, and a lot of relief uh, to the host CPU. So this is really the beginning of using AI within the network to be able to say, here's the best configuration. This will adapt to this configuration. It's almost like a, an intelligent plug and play, right? A spot on. It's, it, the, it's going to start off, Ed, as a software-defined hardware acceleration or a software-defined programmable smart NIC 
but it's going to very quickly evolve into a kind of a, like a self-healing uh, and, and self-orchestrating device, which is where it could be AI enabled. It could be an AI capable device that says, I'm going to be able to do this level of packet processing for specific traffic classes or traffic flows and do a multitude of offloads based on uh, what that AI dictates is needed. One of the problems here, though, is that all of this is changing. You think about the edge, it's really being defined now and being built out, and there's gradations all the way through this. The bottlenecks that exist will be solved and new ones will be created. That is correct. It, it, in fact, to a point where, depending on who you speak to, the definition of edge changes. So you, when you're talking to the hyperscalers, when you're talking to the enterprise, their perspective on what the edge data center sometimes is, is, is different. And uh, that's why it is an evolving landscape. And the problem statements that, uh, that you hear from the different classes of data center customers is different. But the commonality that I've seen in talking to these people is that the, the need for continuous feature innovation at a, at a significant velocity is a common thread uh, across all of these data center customers without any level of compromise on performance. They're all targeting the next generation nodes of ethernet to maximum extent, all of these hyperscalers are at the 100 gig speed node already and they're all actively planning 200 and 400 gig deployments as the next generation. And imagine the, the feature innovation happening at that packet rate, at that line rate, is the significant challenge that the data centers face with today. And really what we're getting is this compute, almost a pervasive compute that moves seamlessly, right? So. You, you want to process some things right at the, the near edge. You want to process some, some things at the far edge. You also want to process some things in the cloud and you want all of them to be able to mesh fairly smoothly as you go forward. That is correct. Uh, not all workloads are created equal. This is now more true than ever before because there's such a deluge of data like we were talking about earlier. It divides the entire packet processing or it divides the workload processing into two buckets in my mind. One is the sheer need for alternative compute complexes to process that level of data that exists. And uh, the other bucket is the ability uh, to process data by the locality of where that compute complex is. So as an example, by virtue of the fact that this network interface card sits right at the edge of the server or sits at right at the edge of the storage box, it has the unique ability to process information way ahead of the, the, of the data hitting the host memory or the host processor. So imagine a, a situation where you want to apply security constructs, where you want to weed out any sort of rogue traffic that's coming in from the network into this, into this server. The NIC, which sits right at the edge, is the prime and ideal candidate for security implementation because it can weed out all of the rogue components before it hits a host memory. So where do you typically run into problems with this? There is typically three areas where we see the biggest need for data center customers for help, the networking, security, and storage. So as you look at these three areas, does it get more granular than that? Or these are sort of big buckets. Oh yeah, it gets a lot more granular than what I'm showing in here. And now you can see this alphabet soup that shows up in each of these problem areas. This is a snapshot of the collected features across these three buckets in calendar 21. And we already know that this is an evolving landscape uh, across all of these three functions that, we, um, that I'm showing in this slide. We know, have an idea that this is going to change. We don't know what it's going to look like in a couple of years. And that's why it is all the more important to have that level of intrinsic programmability and the ability to adapt to this evolving landscape built into the hardware. So when you look at that, you look at all these changes, what's the average lifespan of a NIC card? Is it, uh, you, you think about a, a smartphone, for example, it used to be two years, now it's four years, everything seems to be going up. Uh, you're right that the early uh, early onset of the NIC cards had, had a lifespan of about two to three years. And this typically was driven by uh, the evolution or the cadence of what the processors uh, used to put out as their roadmap. And if you follow that, then you know that every two, three years is when the upgrade cycles were typically uh, scheduled for, and that was the, the cadence of upgrades of the, of the NIC. But now that all of the eco infrastructure of the ecosystem is driven by hyperscalers, the cadence of evolution has now shrunk to about 18 months. So every 18 months, the NIC card has to go through some level of upgrade. And that upgrade doesn't necessarily have to be a speed upgrade on the, on the, on the port side for connectivity. 
But now you're talking about upgrades at the software level because the smart NIC doesn't just represent the connectivity aspect of it. The smart NIC also represents the deluge of offload functions, much like what this slide is showing that this adapter or the NIC card is capable of. And that's why that software defined hardware acceleration component becomes important because if you're stuck in an architecture that cannot evolve at the hardware level, then the vendors are now looking at putting out new products at the hardware level every 18 months. But if you build in that level of programmability or that level of composability into that NIC itself, you can have the same hardware last a little bit longer, maybe two years, maybe three years, but the innovation happens at a cadence of about 12 to 18 months. That requires some really intelligent partitioning behind all this, right? That is correct. That level of partitioning that you spoke about is exactly what we're proposing with the Xilinx SN1000 Smart NIC. This uh, cartoon that I have here on the right-hand side shows our isolated data plane and control plane. Let's focus on the, on the data plane here. The data plane, which is our programmable, adaptable fabric, has these red and blue blocks that I show in here. And the red blocks shows the out-of-box experience that uh, our customers can have with hardware acceleration that's just built by Xilinx. But that granular partitioning that you asked about comes in via the composability that we build in into this data plane. So all of those blue boxes in here are the plug-in points where our customers have the option to say, for this specific traffic flow, which is able to handle storage traffic, I want to be able to, to offload NVMe over TCP, or I want to be able to do storage services of compression, or I want to be able to manage a separate class of traffic and manage it like a, a, a gateway appliance would do. So I want to add firewall capabilities. I want to add encryption, decryption capabilities. So on the fly, dynamically configuring the data plane to say, I want to compose one traffic flow for storage acceleration. I want to compose another traffic flow for, uh, for security. And depending on oh, how the customers really want to partition uh, the, the, the available real estate in there, they may, may be able to throw in another Ceph over TCP kind of distributed storage acceleration in there as well, fully consuming all the real estate that is there in the, in the fabric to maximize the performance and feature set that to meet their application specific needs. So really what you've done is you've added flexible partitioning. You can change the parameters anytime you want, right? Flexible and dynamically reconfigurable. So you really don't need to have any downtime. Uh, so the network packets are just kind of going live at packet rate, but you're able to bring in and out functions to meet performance and, 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 and feature set requirements. So looking at all this, where do you see the next bottlenecks creeping up and how does this fit into that picture? The bottlenecks typically will arrive at performance scaling as well as in feature set multi-tenancy scaling. The enterprise is currently in the 25 gig to 100 gig transition. And now they will be hitting the bottleneck of performance as they roll in from 100 gig to the next, next speed evolution in their, in their deployments. Hyperscalers are already seeing that problem. And, but as you approach the, uh, the proverbial Moore's law is kind of uh, slowing down a uh, real paradigm, that's when you need the heterogeneous architecture in the servers and in the storage to come rescue. Kartik Srinivasan, thanks for a great explanation. Thank you very much, Ed.